So anyways, uh, in the process of installing this MOB, and just so you know, MOB, for those that don't know, that's man overboard. Um, you having to fall off the boat. That's what this whole purpose of this uh, unit is for. Um, and that's what they call it, an MOB, uh, basic kill switch. Um, so it shuts the engine off. Anyways, so the biggest challenge I saw uh, working in here, or trying to find a place to actually install this, because um, this has to be installed on the boat, um, is an area where you have enough room because the antenna uh, for the wireless system screws onto the back of this thing. So you got to make sure there's plenty of depth. Um, it does bend a little bit so you, you can work around wires and stuff like that. But you know you can't put a ton of pressure on it. So um, you do have that. So you have this kind of distance thing that you kind of have to deal with. Um, the other challenge that I noticed is the wiring that they sent me, um, you know, everything plugs in really nice, kind of like my GPS and my radar system, but the wires are really, <laughs> I wish they had been maybe a foot or even two feet longer than this. This is kind of short. So I may have to splice some wires um, to reach the ignition because this is where this is going to tie into. This is the old manual uh, kill switch right here, this little plug down here. And um, this is what is going to be replacing that. Unfortunately, there's not enough room in here to install this. There's, there's too much other stuff or there's uh, uh, other parts of the boat that's just in the way. And I looked at all different kinds of configuration. I was looking at maybe putting it in here, but then you're running into another wall. Um, I was looking at maybe in this area. Unfortunately, you have a huge wire loom that's right about here where the ignition system and all this kind of stuff goes into a big wire loom. So trying to put it here wouldn't work. And this is too small of a gap here. Um, I was thinking maybe even side here, but there's a big reinforcement for the steering system and uh, it runs way out here. So didn't leave enough room for that. Um, this side would have worked. Unfortunately, there's a lot of other stuff right here uh, for the steering as well. Part of the steering kind of comes out a little bit. And um, so, and plus this is really thick. It's like an inch, inch and a half thick uh, plywood here, or not plywood, but whatever wood that, uh, like bossel wood or something that they use. The only other logical area that made some sense for me was this. Because down here, this goes into the cabin, and I certainly didn't want anything to bump the uh, antenna um, or bump even the back of this thing by accident with, you know, fishing gear or whatever the case might be. So this seemed to be the most logical. Plus, this is just a plate, and it's, it's a nice plastic plate. It's probably, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's probably maybe a quarter inch thick. So it was real easy to go through with my hole saw. And I took a 2 and a 16th inch hole saw, went right through. And um, now this can go. And there's plenty of room, too, for the antenna and everything. Um, so this just fits in there real nice and snug. Just kind of get it where you want it. And that's pretty much going to be right about where it needs to be. And then there's a nut that goes on the back side of it. So that's going to be the spot for it. The only thing that it looks like I'm going to have to do is probably add some wire to this. Didn't really want to have to do that. I love when things are just nice and clean and I could have just butt connected right to the ignition system. But uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to put in probably a foot, foot and a half of section wire to go from here to that ignition system. So anyways, I'll bring you back when I have a little bit more to show, but that's pretty much it right now. Um, we'll go on the inside here real quick so you can kind of see that coming out the back side. So here's the spaghetti mess inside here. Um, but there, there it is right there. So I, I don't hope you guys can get that, but that's it. So and then I got to run the wiring down and underneath and going towards the ignition unit back over that side area. So anyways, I'll bring you back once I have more to show, bud. All right, guys. Well, uh, I got everything uh, wired in now. It's all hardwired in. And um, 
I haven't done anything yet to pair the unit uh, with the uh, fob, so uh, I wanted to do that on the video. But I'll, I have to say, uh, this company, I mean, as far as the instructions go, I mean, it's fantastic. So, um, like here for, for my setup, I have a Yamaha Outboard uh, 200 horsepower four-stroke. And I mean, it gives the diagram and everything right here of what to do, what wiring goes with what. Um, really straightforward. There's another one for Mercury. Um, and, uh, you know, for other outboards, uh, e you know, each one of these is pretty close to whatever other outboard there's going to, you, you guys are going to encounter. Um, so great instructions. There's a, uh, if you needed to call them, you could call them or email them. But, um, so far, I'm impressed. Uh, everything was straightforward. Great, um, they used great electrical connectors. Um, heat shrink. Uh, so I use my heat gun to heat shrink the connections in place. And like I said, the only thing so far that I had a little gripe about was the length of the wire was probably about maybe that long. So I just went and picked up some uh, 16 gauge um, wire uh, uh, white and black because that's what comes off my ignition and that's what tied in the white and black uh, for mine here is um, there's a gray wire that attaches to either black or white and mine has the white and then the orange uh, attaches to directly black so very straightforward so I picked up white and black uh, 16 gauge wired them in and uh, now we're going to see how everything works so Right now I'm going to turn on the unit and um, I believe, I want to make sure that, see if I can get this seat, I believe the, uh, the, the hub will light up when I turn on this, uh, the um, battery uh, selector. So, yep, there it goes. It's turning blue, red, and then green. So everything just went on. Hopefully you guys saw that. Now I'm going to pair. And the instructions say, so here's the fob, and then obviously the X hub. So they say to hold this for three seconds, and then uh, I guess a light and a buzzing sound will start, and then uh, I hold this button down for three seconds. So let's see how this goes. So there's that. And now I'm holding, there it is. We're all paired. So now this system is paired together. I mean, that was that was just very easy. So anyways, uh, happy about that. We're going to go start the motor here, and we're going to actually do a test on this. I'm going to put this into the pool water down about uh, a couple of feet or so and see uh, if the thing shuts off as it's supposed to. All right, well, I'll bring you back when we're ready to do that. Let's give this a whirl. So I'm looking at the X, and I'm going to push the little button here, and let's see what happens. Oh, look at there. See? Now that's what's supposed to happen. Let's go ahead and fire the motor up. Oh, success. I like when a plan comes together. All right. So let's go on out now and uh, check this out. Hey, motor's running. All right. So. Here goes the first test. So I'm going to submerge this in the pool and let's see if it kills the engine. How about that? Killed the motor. That's pretty damn good. So motor shut down just like it's supposed to. Just like if uh, yours truly here fell out of the boat, which would be a really bad deal. So, that's test number one. So, now what's kind of cool with this is if you have somebody else with you and the motor shuts off because I just fell overboard and I've got the fob. Uh, after a few seconds, I think it's like after 10 seconds, they can come in here, turn the ignition off, and then start the motor up without the fob. Uh, and they can come pick me up. It, it automatically, and there's also an override. 
if you hold the override down, if say, say I went out fishing, right, and I left this at home, dough. Um, I don't have to ruin my whole trip and have to run all the way back home here to get the little fob. Um, I can actually uh, hold the button down and it'll override the system after 10 seconds and then I can still start it. So anyways, but I like the little setup where, you know, I did submerge it in the pool with just my arm down in the water, probably a couple of feet and it worked like a champ. Now I also believe, if say I'm back here and I'm working the, po the poles or I'm doing something back here and something goes nuts and I can't just run up to the front here to turn the engine off, I think I can reach in my pocket and just grab this and just click the button. Let's see if that actually works. Yeah, shuts the motor off. So that's another nice little deal. So if something, you know, I'm back here and I'm working something and say, you know, a line gets in the prop or just anything happens and I don't have, I can't get up here to shut the engine down, I can just press this and that'll shut it off. They do have uh, several things that you can um, get with this fob, which I'm going to look into probably a couple of them. Um, one of them, I don't know if you can see here, one of them is a wristband. And that looks kind of cool. I think I saw it for like 30 or 40 bucks. Um, you have to buy it separately, but you can just get a wristband. And then I believe this fob attaches to that wristband. So that's one, and then there's another one that you can wear around your neck. Um, that's another possibility. Um, so I'm gonna, I may look into a couple of different ones and see what works the best for me. Um, but you know, for right now, I mean, just having it in my pocket is enough. As long as it's on me when I'm fishing, that's all that matters. Yeah. Hey guys, so I just wanted to also share with you real quick. Um, you probably saw I have two outboards on there. Well, even the small motor, uh, my 8 horsepower Yamaha has a little kill switch on it. What I'm going to end up doing is taking the two wires off of that kill switch, run the uh, wiring up to the uh, new uh, uh, kill switch or MOB, and I can tie those two wires in so that one fob system, the key fob and the X hub, can work the main engine and the small engine, which is really cool because sometimes I like to actually troll with the small motor too or whatever the case might be, I might be running the small motor or even as just a backup, something happens to the main engine and I need to run the small one, it's nice to have that auxiliary uh, uh, and also reassurance that if something happens, that little motor will shut off. So you can tie the system together and I'm going to look at doing that. Uh, probably at a later date, but that's something I am going to do. So if you, if you were thinking about Oh, can you put, you know, a couple of engines together? Yes, you can. So, and especially like if you've got like twin 200s or twin 300s or whatever, yes, you can run. So you don't have to have two separate fobs, two different X hubs. Uh, you, all of it can be tied in as one. So anyways, little update on that. That's it for now, guys.